you have a Kia Sorento that needs a 60,000 mile service? Well, I'm gonna show you how to save some money and do it yourself. We're gonna start by replacing the air filter. This is actually very simple on this car. Flip this cover down and there's two locks right here. Unlock that, the filter slides right out and that filter is very dirty. This filter has definitely been in here the whole life of the vehicle, the whole 60,000 miles. Slide the air filter in. This air filter is a little different. You just push these tabs down, close the door. At this point, we're gonna raise the vehicle up. I'm gonna drain the oil and drain the coolant. I'll take the oil fill cap off, take that off. I generally put it right here so that I don't close the hood by accident without putting oil in it. Stick it right there and then take the coolant cap off as well. Stick that right there. Now I'm going to remove this panel. Make sure you have a drain bucket and drain the engine oil. the drain plug back in. It's always good to use a new seal. And remove the oil filter. Make sure you have the drain bucket underneath. Catch some of the oil. And take a clean rag. Wipe this surface area. Take a little bit of new engine oil and just wipe it on the gasket surface of the new oil filter. That's gonna make it seal better and when you go to take it off next time, it'll make it easier to come off. And get the oil filter up so it's touching, the gasket's touching so it's snug. And then we'll give it another quarter turn or you, if you can get a torque wrench on there, you can do it to 11 foot-pounds. On the passenger side of the radiator, there's a little drain, so you can loosen up this plug right here. Make sure you have a drain bucket underneath to catch the old coolant. This might take a little while. Drain it out. All right, coolant has drained out of the radiator. Now I'm gonna take and close up that drain plug. While we still have the vehicle raised up in the air, let's check out some of the components underneath. Take a look at the drive belt. Uh, make sure there's no cracking. If you look right where it goes on this part of the pulley, this is where the tensioner pulley is. You wanna make sure there's no cracking right there. If you see any cracking, you're gonna be due for a drive belt. Um, the outer edge of this belt looks a little bit dry. If you hear any squeaking, it's probably a good time to replace it. There's also a belt right here that goes to the water pump. You can take a look at that. You twist it, take a look and see if there's any cracking. This one looks pretty good. Check the CV boots on the front drive axles. Um, if you look at those, you wanna turn the wheel while you look at those, see if there's any leaks. Sometimes you'll have a pinhole and you'll actually see grease flinging onto the strut or on the lower control arm. So those look pretty good. Check both sides of those. And if you have an all-wheel drive unit, make sure you check the rear CV joints as well. Now we're gonna take a look at the exhaust system. We wanna check all the hangers, make sure the, all the hangers are there, make sure they're not dry rotted, give it a shake, make sure they're all secure, and then go throughout the whole exhaust and check for leaks. Make sure at all the flanges and the gaskets there's no leaks check and make sure there's no rot holes along the rest of the exhaust. If you have an all-wheel drive vehicle, you want to check the propeller shaft or the drive shaft. Check this rubber coupler at the back. Make sure there's no cracking. Make sure um, it feels tight, which this one does. Check this center support bearing right here. Um, now, normally you'll hear this going down the road. You'll hear a loud noise in the middle if that's bad. Um, it's hard to actually physically check it while it's in the air, but um, there will be movement like this, but just make sure there's no excessive dry rot around that rubber piece right there. 
And then we want to check the front U joints to see if those are good. You can grab the yoke right here and then just try to wiggle the shaft back and forth. And it seems good. There's no play there. Also, if you see a lot of rust build up on any of the caps, then the U joint's probably bad. So I'm going to pull this panel down right here. I don't have to pull the whole panel down, just the screws on this side and right there. This way I can access the fuel lines. You can just take a look at the fuel lines, make sure they look okay. I don't see anything rubbing or anything. Nothing's loose, nothing's rubbed out. So you can check that out and you can check the vapor lines while you're here. So that's good, so I can put the screws back in. You can also check the parking brake cables. Just see if anything is corroded or rusted or cracking. These look good or rubbing. For the front and the rear suspension, take a quick look at all the mounting bolts to make sure they're all there. We want to inspect the front steering and suspension. What we're going to do is shake the wheel side to side. When we're shaking the wheel side to side, if we feel any play, we're going to check the outer tie rod and also the inner tie rod you will see the inner tie rod moving if there's any play. And if not, if you see the outer tie rod, then those parts would be bad. Then we're gonna shake the wheel up and down. If you feel any play, it could possibly be in the ball joint or it could be in the wheel bearing. If you see the ball joint moving, because this is a non-load carrying ball joint, you don't have to support the lower control arm or it could be in the hub bearing. Now we're going to check the sway bar links and bushings. With the sway bar, just grab the front of it and just try to rock it up and down. And this one's tight, but if you see any movement in the ball socket right here or the upper one, that needs to be replaced. Now I'm going to reinstall the shield. Now I'm gonna take the wheels off because I wanna rotate the tires. You can check your owner's manual for the proper location for each tire when you're rotating the tires. It is gonna change if you have directional tires. If you have directional tires, you can only go front to back. For this vehicle, the manual says for the front tires to go to the back and for the back tires to cross to the front. So I have the tires on the ground in the position they need to be after the rotation. Before I put them up, I want to check some things out. We want to check the brake pad material, see how much is left. These look pretty thick. That's the pad material right there. And then you also check in between here and here. Make sure that there's plenty of life left on the pads, which there are on here. Visually look at the rotor, make sure there's no pitting or hot spots. Those look good. We want to check the brake hoses. Make sure there's no cracking. Um, we can even move the rubber hoses around a little bit and the brake lines themselves. Just look at those. And then after checking the brake hoses, just look at the brake lines. Just make sure everything looks okay. Now while we're still in the front of the vehicle, check the power steering boots. Make sure that they are all intact. Make sure they're not falling off or ripped or another steering rack is leaking. Everything looks good on the front. Now we're gonna check the brakes and the brake hoses and lines and rotors on the rear. Now we can put the wheels back on. And now I'm gonna to torque the wheels to 80 foot-pounds in a star pattern to make sure the wheel gets tightened down evenly. Now I'll use a funnel, put it in the oil fill spot, and then I'm just gonna add the appropriate oil. You can check your owner's manual for what kind of oil to use. And I'm gonna remove the funnel, put the oil fill cap back on. Now because I don't have coolant in the engine, before I start it to check the engine oil level, I'm gonna add the coolant. Now I'm going to use this coolant funnel that attaches to the top of the radiator and I'm going to add the appropriate coolant. You can check the owner's manual for the appropriate type of coolant. 
it. Now with the coolant filled up, I'm gonna leave this funnel on. I'm gonna start the car for about 10 seconds and then shut it off and then I'm gonna check the engine oil. Now I can check the oil level. The dipstick is located right there. Just take a rag, wipe off the dipstick, reinsert the dipstick, pull it out again, and just check the level. It's right at the top, which is good. Now the coolant system is full. What I can do now is start the engine, run the engine for about 10 minutes. I want to turn the heat on and fan on about medium speed. With fan on medium speed, you should start to feel heat after about five minutes. So it's been about five minutes and I feel heat coming out, which is good. That means all the coolant's up high on the engine and stuff. And the temp gauge is starting to go up, but it's not quite at normal level yet and my level outside is good. All right, at this point, I'm checking the upper radiator hose and just making sure it's hot. Be very careful when you grab this. Um, when this is hot, that means the thermostat has opened up. It's gonna get extremely hot to the point where you almost can't hold on to it. And it's almost at that point. I'm gonna let it run for about two more minutes and then I'm gonna shut the vehicle off. Now I'm gonna let the engine cool down. Now that's gonna suck some of this coolant back into the system, monitor the level, adjust accordingly. Then you can remove the funnel and put the cap back on. Now when you do a drain and fill coolant service like we did here, it only gets partial of the coolant out of the whole system. So what would be recommended if you wanna do a thorough job, um, let the vehicle sit for a little while and then drain the coolant out of the radiator again and do the same procedure. Now that this has cooled down, I'm just gonna put this stopper in the funnel and take the funnel off. Make sure the coolant level is up to the top of the radiator and then put the cap back on. You wanna check the coolant reservoir. Um, what you can do is use a fluid transfer pump and suck all the coolant out of there and then put the new coolant in there and there's a full line and a low line. Next, you wanna check the brake fluid. Just take a rag, wipe off the cap, take the cap off, take a look, see where the level is at, and the level's right where it needs to be. If the fluid looks extremely dirty, it may be a good time to change it. Put the cap back on. I'm gonna take a look at the battery, make sure the battery terminals look okay, make sure they're not corroded, make sure they're tight positive side as well, looks good. Now we're gonna use a battery tester. Attach the battery tester appropriately. And the battery tested good, it passed. Now we're gonna take this cover off, right here. Just pull it up. We wanna take a look at the vacuum lines, any of the hoses, the rubber hoses, make sure they're not cracked, make sure they're all in the right positions. You can look at the fuel lines right there, make sure there's no leaks. And over here, there's a vacuum line right there. Just give it a pinch, make sure it doesn't break. Looks good. Everything looks good. When you install the cover, press it down. Another thing you wanna do is check the gas cap. Pull the gas cap off, check the rubber ring around the cap, make sure it's not cracking or anything. It looks pretty good. And normally at the dealership, or if you were having this repaired at a shop, they would add a fuel additive to this. So you can always add a fuel additive. Put the cap back on, tighten it a click, close the door. And now I'm gonna replace the cabin filter. Open the glove box. Turn these little dials. Just take some needle nose pliers, push on this little pin thing right here, slide that off, take this cover off right here, slide the old cabin filter out, find the direction of the new one, slide the new one in, slide this back on this pin right here, push the door in a little bit and put these stoppers back in. Now with the key on, with the engine off, I want to reset the oil light. So I'm gonna hit this scroll button right here and look at the display up top. And it's, we wanna go to the wrench. So now you're on the wrench. 
Now to reset that, we're gonna hit the OK button. Hold the OK button and it will reset. Now it's 5,000 miles, 152 days. Now we wanna check the operation of the AC. Start the car, turn the AC on, turn the fan on high, turn the temperature all the way down, recirculate. Now you can just feel by the vent. Um, it would help if you had a temperature probe, just make sure it's colder than the outside air. So I know that's a lot, but now you know what's involved in performing a 60,000 mile service for this vehicle. So save yourself some money and do it yourself. Mm -hmm.